Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. This is the game Pillars of the Earth, which I really, really enjoyed. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, how this game's played, what type of person might like this, what type of person might not like this, uh, and dive on into it. So this is Pillars of the Earth by Cosmos. Let's go ahead and dive on into it. Alright, so starting out from the looks of it, it looks like a game that would be really pretty in-depth. However, it really is not all that in-depth. Fairly simple, straightforward rule book. Uh, fairly small in comparison to games. I feel like looking at this one, it was one that looked like it was going to be rather large, but it really wasn't all that big. So this is a, uh, hopefully you're familiar with these terms a little bit, a card drafting slash meeple placing game. So what that means is you're going to have some cards down here at the bottom of the board. You've got a track around here that tracks your victory points. That's how you win, whoever has the most of those. And then you have gold down here that you're going to track uh, that you'll be spending for various reasons. So you're going to have some resource cards down here and some worker cards. You're going to be uh, mining sand from the gravel pit, stone from the quarry, and wood from the forest, and you're going to use those to be building the cathedral right here in the middle. This is based off of uh, a book, I believe, uh, which I have not read. You don't need any context. You don't need any previous knowledge of that to be able to play the game. And so really, really fun. Just uh, I feel like balance between enough options, enough things to do within their phases, uh, but still being simple enough to be able to play in a relatively short amount of time, be able to pick up and teach new people uh, easily. So without putting everything out on the board, I'm going to tell you what we've got here. So we have this bag, and each player is going to have some different pieces right here. You're going to have three of these big guys right here. They almost look like uh, bishops in in chess and so you're going to take each of those for each player and so there's three of them and then the second phase i'm going to go ahead and jump to that since we're talking about it you're going to pull one out and so if it's yellow and that's my color you put that on the first track down here and so the first one starts at seven so if you want to take your turn and place your guy out on one of these spaces. There are different spaces that do different things. You have uh, the King's Bridge right here, which you get to take an advantage card. Those are helpful. You have over here uh, the Shiring, which you get to take a Craftsman. Normally you pay for them down here. You'd get to take them potentially for cheaper if you work your way down here, which doesn't make sense to you yet, but it will. Uh, you have the Kingsbridge Priory, which you just straight up get victory points right there. Over here you get resources, so it looks like a lot of stuff. Once you get into it, it really is pretty simple. Over here you get exempt, it, exempt from the taxes, and over here you get protection from bad events. There are good and bad events in there, uh, but, you know most of them that we played with were bad. And so that's a decent place to go because you may have to pay, you may not be able to gather as many resources, whatever that event is. And so you have those cards, you have event cards up here, you have advantage cards here, you have craftsman cards in different sections. So they're gonna get better and better as the game goes on. You have some craftsman cards that you're bringing down every round, you play six rounds, which is uh, indicative of kind of six different periods, uh, I think they're more than a year apiece even, <clears throat> that you are working on this cathedral. And so you're going to have two cards down here that are craftsmen that you can purchase with gold. And then you're going to have seven down here resource cards that you can purchase with your little guys. And so you're placing your guys on the board and then you're getting stone from the quarry, for example. So all these little blocks. And then you trade those in for points, uh, victory points, and the different cards tell you the ratios that you'll do that on. What else do we have here? So phase number one, you're drafting your cards. Everyone's putting their meeples out. If you have any extra ones you don't want to use, you can always put those in the wool mill, and then you will get one coin per each, um, one gold per each worker that's there, which is really nice. That's a way just to, you know, you can take all 10 of them and say, ah, I'm just, I want to get 10 gold this next turn. You can certainly do that. Uh, another 
Another option, oh yeah, so these guys, phase two, once you finish the cards, once everyone takes as many cards as they can or want, and then any remaining go to the wool mill, once that turn is over, turn number two begins, or phase number two begins, and you take the big guys right here, you place them on this track, and then you go ahead and pay that cost. If you don't wanna pay that cost, if you're the first one out and you're on the seven, you don't wanna pay seven gold to go first, you can say you wanna skip. And if you do that, it will be free when it comes back around to you. So there's a little gamble that you need to decide on. Because once a space is taken, it's taken, you can't go there anymore. So that's step number two. Step number three, you just go through all of these things. So turns go fairly quickly once you get into it. One, you draw an event card. Two, you look at the archbishop's seat. Whoever is there is protected from the event or gains one resource from the market. And all these things say what they do on the board as well. So if you sit, if you're on the archbishop's seat, you forget what it is, protection from event or one resource from market. Anyone in the wool mill, take one gold per worker. And so you work your way all the way through these guys. <clears throat> and that is how a round, how a round goes. So that is uh, an entire round right there. You take everything off, you reset things, you put your guys back in the bag, you move to the next person and you uh, go to the next thing. So there is a decent amount of kind of resetting up. And one thing that we found a little bit difficult was just looking at the backs of the cards, trying to keep everything in their right uh, respective places because you have the advantage cards, which are supposed to be off to the side. And you have your resource cards that are reshuffled every single round. And you've got a couple that are put aside and then you've got new ones that come out. You've got the worker cards that come down. So just trying to keep track of that stuff when you discard them um, was something that we we did fine at, but we had to be kind of intentional about one person. All right, here, we'll give you these cards when they're used, uh, the resources cards and that kind of thing. Because the resource card you'll take, it'll be in front of you. And then when it comes around to phase three, you'll go and move through these. And as you take your meeples from the forest and your forest cubes, you will give that card back to that, that person, back into the pile, the that will get shuffled up for the resources to come out again. So really, really fun game. Uh, someone compared it to, uh, similar to Catan with more kind of involved in it. And I really liked this because it seemed like a game that was really, really close for all three of us. You know, depending on how the last turn ended up, anyone could have ended up winning and really, really enjoyable. I thought this was going to be one that was way more in depth, way more rules, way more to keep track of, but it really was fairly simple to just start playing. And once we played one turn, really easy to, to move on from there. So awesome game. Really, really love this. Would definitely recommend it if you enjoy uh, those types of games. It is somewhat in depth if, if you haven't played a lot of games in the past, uh, but definitely Definitely enjoy this game. Really, really fun. Would highly recommend Pillars of the Earth. So hopefully that gives you a touch and a taste of what this game is, what it does, and why it may or may not be right for you. Thanks.